Dobar dan. Gledajte emisiju 15 minuta. Naša današnja gošća je direktorka USAID-a za Evropu i Euroaziju, Erin McKee. Welcome, Mrs. McKee. Thank you. What was your reason for coming to Niš in Serbia? Uh, I really appreciate your having me on the program today. And uh, this is the end of my trip. The reason that we came was to meet with my team on the ground at the embassy in Belgrade, but also to meet with our government uh, partners, our implementing partners, our beneficiaries, with youth, with activists, um, and with industry across Serbia to identify where our work is having the greatest impact and where, uh, in terms of priorities, we could do more. Uh, how important does USA think is to have uh, uh, free media, independent media, and uh, free flow of information? <laughs> it's not just USAID. Uh, as you well know, one of the critical pillars of democracy, what we call the fourth estate, uh, is uh, a free and independent media. And it's so important because uh, democracy can only work when people have access to facts, when the uh, ability of non-governmental actors to shine a light on positive governance and del good delivery of services and when that doesn't go so well. And if there's corruption, corrupt activity or transactions that uh, are not in accordance with the social contract between the people and their government, it's very important for media, free and independent media, to exist to shine a light on those activities. It is fundamental to a thriving and robust democracy to have access to facts, to have uh, a resource and information so that citizens who are vital to democracy can make informed decisions. And so we, USAID, through our development programs, support free and independent media, but also hold this as one of our key values and a fundamental, uh, as we say, line of effort uh, to support countries such as Serbia to realize your full democratic potential. Yeah, and what are your views about uh, on the situation, media situation in Serbia and the region? So I've learned, unfortunately, that there's closing space. And this is of concern to us. Um, as I said, uh, uh, we know that Serbia uh, wants to continue its path to uh, EU accession. And one of the uh, critical elements uh, for, as I said, a thriving democracy and the requirements uh, for the, uh, e you know, beyond EU candidacy is to have a vibrant, free, and independent media. When you only have one source of information, that does not stimulate discourse. That does not stimulate debate. And a thriving, robust, healthy democracy must have space for that debate. And yes, that's there where... There is no pluralism in, in uh, society. Uh, are you seeing any progress in Serbia? and what uh, USAID uh, doing to help? So this is uh, my first visit, but I understand from the conversations that I've had and the meetings that I've had uh, that there is great potential for greater progress um, and that there is commitment, but uh, there's also some frustration that there hasn't been more action against that commitment. And so our programs, whether with free and independent media, whether with civil society, whether with uh, building uh, uh, greater transparency and accountability together with the government. Uh, I'll give you an example. We are uh, launching a, uh, a new uh, public procurement reform program. Mm -hmm. um, and this will, we hope, uh, as it pr uh, proceeds, shine uh, greater light on and provide the public with more information about how taxpayer dollars are being spent in terms of big public procurements. And we are very hopeful that uh, the partnership we have with the government for this program will accelerate to be able to satisfy what I heard while I was here, some concerns about la lack of access to information about what the government is doing. Yes. Fake news, uh, disinformation and polarization is the problems in uh, public debates in Serbia, but that is problems in, in USA. Uh, is, that is a global trend, or what is the solution? 
So uh, a colleague who is a journalist told me, I have to give you this quote, there is no such thing as fake news. There, there are facts yes. and there is fiction or there are lies. It is not fake news. It is not news at all. And so I think particularly organizations uh, such as yours, like uh, Eugenie Vesti, are very important to provide citizens with facts. Now that doesn't mean that there isn't a lot of uh, non-fact-based information out there. And I think that uh, what's very important in terms of both supporting free and independent media is also the, the work that we're doing on uh, uh, digital literacy and information yes. literacy and people to be able to better uh, choose and understand what is fact-based and what is not. And uh, I don't think that uh, the, it, we've been successful around the world to counter disinformation. And so what I think the most important approach is, is to ensure citizens have access to alternatives, to choices, and most importantly, fact-based information that then they can, as citizens, make informed decisions. Yes, but uh, it's more propaganda pressure on citizens is very, very big. It is, and and that what how to overcome that pressure um, is not by telling them what they should believe, by but by arming them with the intellectual tools to understand what is truth and what is not. Yeah, uh, everyone uh, is talking about energy these days. Yes, uh, about uh, high prices, about supplies. Uh, we have the biggest crisis in this century. What are your thoughts about this situation? So um, I agree with you fully. I think that uh, the consequences of Putin's second invasion of Ukraine and the ripple effect across Europe, not just for Serbia and other countries, um, of energy dependence is surfacing right now as we see in rising prices and the other pressures you described. So in the energy security space, Right? and in terms of energy independence, the work that we're doing here in Serbia in particular are building blocks that are critical, and that's energy efficiency. That's an important first step, because when prices are rising, um, you want to reduce uh, the, the need, or if you will, for so much energy, and energy efficiency I was, is critical. Um, old systems where you have to regulate the temperature in your yes. apartment by opening the window, this is not good practice. Um, and so I'm uh, delighted to say that I know that the work that we've done here in Niche, for example, reduced uh, energy uh, supply requirements by 50%. That's a huge step forward. And in fact, this uh, community, this city can be a model for the rest of Serbia on realizing energy efficiency to reduce the need for more energy and then build out what we look at as energy independence by diversifying supply away from Gazprom and away from the Kremlin. And um, not necessarily completely shutting that off. We're not gonna tell people to make a binary choice, but choice matters and in a democracy, the people and your government should have market choices and an ability to choose with whom they purchase their energy, if you will, at least to fossil fuel, and in our renewable work and the work that we're doing in uh, greening the energy space here, uh, then the reliance or dependence on fossil fuels from whomever will reduce as well. And I'm excited about the work we've been doing and what we're going to be expanding going ahead. Like in media, uh, in energy, we uh, want to have a pluralism. Mm. Right. Choice matters. That's what democracy is about. Uh, when it comes to EU integration, um, that's a kind of slow process from citizen perspective. But for whom is that uh, process is more important? For citizens, for institutions, for governments? So, it's important for everyone. Um, government, citizens and the country. Because the ability to access greater markets, have greater freedom of movement, have greater choices, uh, anchored in uh, a community such as uh, the European Union uh, that appreciates choice, freedom, and market-based values um, is good for the future. And so while it's been slow, uh, I would say that the process is as slow as your country decides to make it. 
the reforms necessary to achieve uh, uh, membership um, as a candidate are clear. And those steps should be taken. And we have, through our programming and through our other partners, uh, both from the EU as well as um, even at the local level and very passionate um, uh, Serbian uh, citizens uh, to uh, really demand accelerated reforms, uh, particularly in anti-corruption. And I mentioned yes. earlier the public procurement activity. We believe that um, uh, the momentum can be accelerated. It just takes uh, that work, but also the demand for accelerating that work. And that's where I would uh, make a plea to Eugene of Yesti and your community to raise your voice and say, let's, let's work a little bit harder at this. Uh, a lot of um, public opinion researchers uh, said that uh, young people want to leave Serbia. Uh, what are your thoughts on the position of youth in Serbia and uh, opportunities for them to achieve some goals, economic, so, political, <clears throat> life goals? So everything that we do focuses on both the here and now, but also investing in uh, one of Serbia's greatest resources, and that is your people. And so focusing on youth and not just the next generation, but creating conditions now so that there is vibrant economic opportunity to grow economic prosperity but keep Serbians here, keep that great talent here to contribute to the future of the country and the economy, not just in the ICT space which is booming and I want to congratulate uh, your country on recognizing the importance of that sector and, and investing in digital literacy and IT opportunities and innovation and um, all of the other things that we know uh, the young people are most keenly interested in. But also in, for example, agriculture, which is one of the biggest drivers of your economy, yes. and looking at ag tech and making, I don't know, the farm sexy again <laughs> and, making, yes. and having youth want to, to um, give back not just to their country but to their community and uh, their tradition. And so we are working across uh, multiple sectors targeting youth to be able to give them the skills, the opportunity, and bringing in the private sector so that when they have those skills and those opportunities, they can apply them and earn a living here. They don't have to leave the country and find that opportunity elsewhere. That's on the economic side. You asked about politics. We're also looking at uh, and working on developing the next generation of uh, democratic leaders. Um, and this goes back to when I was talking about consumers of information and the importance of participating in democracy and civic responsibility on the part of citizens, um, focusing on youth and making sure that they understand their responsibility in ensuring that not just leaders are held accountable, but they play a role in identifying solutions or alternatives to governance, local subnational, yeah. national level. Most of the young people are not interested in politics. S well, so we need to change that, right? And it doesn't mean everybody needs to become a politician, but democracy at its heart is a social contract between the people and its government. And so that contract has participation or requirements of participation on both sides. And so we want to help folks understand, youth, middle class, old people like myself, understand that uh, uh, you don't have to be complacent and wait for something to happen or wait for a decision or you're dissatisfied with the government or you're dissatisfied with the economy or you're dissatisfied with the price of energy or you're dissatisfied with your sewers, sewage system or your uh, electric lighting in your town. You just don't sit around and wait for somebody to maybe notice and fix it. You point it out, you raise it through the proper channels, and you require your government to take action, action to fix it. That's not being a politician, that's being a citizen. And the last question, uh, what will be the uh, best legacy of USAID in Serbia? best legacy of USAID in Serbia uh, would be to see a free, prosperous, 
vibrant, thriving nation, fully integrated with the EU, fully connected with the West, with independence in terms of energy, market, education, information, and a brighter future that Serbia both deserves and unlocking that potential, which we know that we're working on, uh, is fully realized. Thank you, Mrs. Miki. Thank you very much. Bila ova emisija 15 minuta, moje ime je Milan Zirojević.